The final two logic gates that we will be examining are the exclusive OR and the exclusive NOR gates. If this is the first video you have watched on logic gates, I recommend going back and watching the videos on the other logic gates, as I will assume you have a firm grasp on NOT, AND, OR, NAND, and NOR logic. Now in this video, we're first going to compare the exclusive OR with the regular OR logic gate to gain a better understanding of its operation. Next, we will look at the truth table and timing diagram. Then we will look at the Boolean algebra use. And finally, we're going to take a look at how these gates are important in arithmetic logic circuitry. So let's get started. So what makes the exclusive OR different than a regular OR gate? So to answer this, let's have a quick English lesson. In the English language, the term OR is actually a little bit ambiguous. And here's what I mean by that. Let's say I offer to make you a sandwich, and I ask you, would you like peanut butter, or would you like jelly? Let's make a truth table to get the possible answers. You can say no peanut butter or jelly, and then you have no sandwich. You could also say you want just peanut butter, or you want just jelly. In either one of these cases, you still get a sandwich. However, you can also say that you want both peanut butter and jelly. And in this last case, you still have a sandwich. This is an example of inclusive OR. It includes all possible combination of inputs. And this is how the OR gate that we've already studied works. Now, let's say you're driving down the road and there's a traffic signal ahead. Do you stop or do you go on? You can do one or the other, but you can't do both at the same time. This is an example of exclusive OR. Each input excludes the other input, and that is how the exclusive OR gate, or XOR for short, works. Notice that the symbol for the XOR looks like the OR, but with that extra curved line on the input side. Now the logic works like this. For an exclusive OR gate, output X is high when input A is low and input B is high, or when input A is high and input B is low. X is low when A and B are both high or both low. The XOR and XNOR gates are also unique in that they must have only two inputs. The only other gate that has a limitation like this is the NOT gate, or inverter, which can only have one input. So here are the four input combinations, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 0 and 0 gives us an output of 0, since the inputs are the same. 0, 1 gives us a high output, since the inputs are at opposite levels. The same goes for 1, 0 on the third gate. The last combination is two high inputs. This gives us a low output, since just like 0, 0, both inputs are the same. Now let's look at the truth table. We have our four combinations of two inputs as always. Two inputs of zero gives us an output of zero. An input of zero and an input of one gives us an output of one. So that's the next two values. Finally, two inputs of one give an output of zero. It is important to remember that both inputs being the same will give you a low output. Otherwise, this is just an OR gate. Since we're on the truth table, let's take a break from the XOR and look at its inverse, the exclusive NOR, or XNOR. Just like NAND and NOR gates, this gate is simply the negated version of the XOR. Also, just like NAND and NOR, the symbol, as you can see, is the same symbol as the XOR, but with an inversion bubble on the output. Since we are inverting the output of the XOR, the logic of this gate is that the output X is high when both inputs are the same and low when input A is high and B is low or when input A is low and B is high. So for input 0 and 0, the output is 1. For inputs 0, 1 and 1, 0, the output is 0. Finally, for inputs 1 and 1, the output is 1. The truth table of XNOR is the inverse of the truth table of XOR. Now let's look at the timing diagram of the XOR and XNOR together. As always, these first 
truth tables are just the basic ordered inputs from the truth table. Just like with AND and NAND, and with OR and NOR, these timing diagrams are complete mirrors of one another. Whenever one is high, the other is low, and vice versa. Let me know in the comments whether you prefer looking at a truth table, or if you like looking at timing diagrams to observe logic gate behavior. As far as I have seen, this is the only channel that presents both. So let's switch it up and check out another timing diagram with more random inputs. Just as in all the previous videos, we're going to make a truth table. Begin by writing in the input levels using ones and zeros as has been done here. Now we can fill our truth table with these values. Remember that t equals zero is the first line of the truth table, then go in order to t equals six. Now that our truth table is filled out with inputs, it is time to determine the outputs. Which time segments produce a low output? I hope you said t equals zero, two, and four. All the rest of the time segments produce a high output, so that's t equals one, three, five, and six. Now that we have our truth table, let's draw the output waveform. That wasn't too bad, right? We should be getting pretty good at this by now. So let's use the exact same inputs, but using the XNOR gate. Here's the timing diagram. If you want to try it yourself, go ahead and pause the video and see if we can get the same thing. Okay, are you back yet? Here we go. Truth table first. Now let's fill out the outputs, keeping in mind that this is the inverse of XOR logic. And now we can draw our output waveform. Alright, so how did you do? Let's put this timing diagram and the timing diagram for the XOR next to each other. And as expected, we can see how these two gates mirror one another. Now it's time to look at the Boolean expression of XOR. This operation has its own unique symbol. For inputs A and B and output X, the output X equals A XOR B. As you see here, the symbol for XOR is the plus sign, the sign for OR, with a circle around it, indicating this OR is exclusive. If you're typing and can't find the symbol to write out the Boolean expression, you can always just type A XOR B. But there's also one more way to represent XOR and Boolean. We can also write A B prime, which is an apostrophe, plus A prime B. Just take note of this for now, and we're going to cover how and why this works later on in Unit 4 when we dive deeper into Boolean algebra. For the XNOR Boolean expression, we're going to place a negation bar, or not bar, over the entire expression. This bar is going to indicate that we need to invert the XOR logic, which of course gives us an XNOR output. So here are the four Boolean expressions for both the XOR and XNOR functions. 0 XOR 0 is 0, and 0 XNOR 0 is 1, 0 XOR 1 is 1, and 0 XNOR 1 is 0. 1 XOR 0 is 1, and 1 XNOR 0 is 0. Finally, 1 XOR 1 is 0, and 1 XNOR 1 is 1. So far, inversion is fairly intuitive. We just play the opposite game with a single bit. AND and OR is intuitive as it is part of everyday decision making. NAND and NOR stand out because all logic functions can be created using either one of these gates as we will see in a later video. So what makes XOR and XNOR important logical functions? Well, The answer is that they're required for creating digital arithmetic circuitry. Going back to binary arithmetic in Unit 2, adding two bits of data looks like this. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 1, 0. Now, look closely at what we have just written out. The left side of these equations are inputs starting with binary 0 and counting up to binary 3. 
but now take a look at the ones place of the answers. We have the truth table of an XOR. So what about that one in the twos place? Remember, this is binary, not decimal, so it's the twos place. What happens to this little guy? Well, it gets dropped. So the XOR by itself is what is known as a 2-bit modulo 2 adder. The XOR adds 2 bits and takes the modulus by 2. And what that means is our answer is the remainder of the addition equation when it is divided by 2. It seems like a mouthful, so let's go over this. If we add 0 and 0, we get 0. Now divide 0 by 2 and we get a remainder of 0. When we add 1 and 0, we get 1. If we divide this by 2, we get 0, but a remainder of 1. That remainder is the modulus. Last, we add 1 and 1, and whether we get 2 or we get 10, dividing by 2 will leave us with a remainder of 0. 0 is the modulo 2 answer to 1 plus 1. Now in unit 6, we're going to make a full adder using XOR gates. But for now, it's enough to know that this gate is the key to digital addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So now we have covered all the basic logic gates. There will be a few supplemental videos at the end of the unit, the transistor logic used to create these gates, and how to create all other gates using only NAND gates and using only NOR gates. Until next time.